Hi there, it's Ed. Thank you for tuning back in. I have wanted to do a solo role-playing game video for a long time. I've watched several that I've really enjoyed, especially Trevor Duval on Me, Myself, and Die. I think he just finished his third season. If you haven't seen that, highly recommend it. He does a great job. He's a performer, so he knows about story and pacing and characterization, which makes it very entertaining to watch. And he's got some great production values and miniatures and sets various things like that. I've wanted to do something like that for a while. And I was trying to decide, well, if I did that, what kind of game or RPG system or what would I do? And then I had an epiphany. This one, Traveler. Back when I did my Traveler video about eh, 10 months or so ago, I had mentioned that I had always wanted to play Traveler, but I never had the opportunity. And it dawned on me, well, this would be a perfect time to try to play the Traveler RPG. So that is what I'm going to do. I am going to play solo RPG with Traveler. Now the great thing about Traveler, or at least one of the things that I really liked, is the fact that Traveler is full of mini games. There's the mini game of character creation, of um, creating a planet, creating the sector the planet is in, creating spaceships and all those sorts of things. So I'm going to try to go through several of those mini games, maybe not all of them, but several of them. And of course the first one to start with is Character creation. So I am going to create a Traveler character right before your very eyes. So let's get started. Now Traveler characters have six characteristics as they call them. They're strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing. And you generate the numbers for those characteristics by rolling two six-sided dice, which I am going to do. It doesn't say this in the Traveler rules, but I think the assumption is you're going to roll them in order. All right. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, it doesn't say that because the time period this uh, RPG was created, that was the assumption. You were going to roll them in order of, uh, of as they appear. So that is what I'm going to do. So let's get started here. I'm going to roll a couple of 600 dice, and we're going to see what happens. All right. Uh, <laughs> starts off great. A three for strength. All right. And let's, see, let's try again. What is that? And a four... For dexterity. Oh, this is this is <laughs> going to be something. Let's see. All right. Uh, oh, all right. And 11 for endurance. So pretty tough, yet clumsy and <laughs> weak individual. Okay. Uh, okay, 6, 7, 8 for intelligence. So a little more intelligent than average. How about education? Uh, not terribly educated. Had a 4. Mm, my goodness. Does Traveler have a rule for hopeless characters? I don't see one, to be honest. And a six for social standing. All right. So there we are. Uh, we have our six characteristics. Now, I am going to use all of the character generation rules. Yes, including the survival role. Uh, therefore, I'm going to go ahead and roll up about six to eight different sets of stats to begin with. And uh, hopefully one of those characters will survive and have a relatively lengthy career. So let's, let's do that real quick. So I just I just rolled a two for intelligence <laughs> and a twelve for education. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. Uh. I remember now why I use these dice to play champions <laughs> because they seem to roll low. I uh, have a lot of threes and twos in all of these characters I made. But I did roll up eight sets of characteristic rolls. And I'm going to use them. Um, I may end up, a lot of these guys may not survive their terms of service. Entirely possible. Um, and I may go ahead and make up a few of them. If they do survive, continue finishing them out and then pick which one I want to use. Let's see. That brings up a, I don't know, brings up something 
different, I guess, between modern game design and modern character creation in RPGs and the way we did it a long time ago. A long time ago, if you rolled a... Well, first of all, you didn't design a character so much as you just rolled randomly and see what you came up with and tried to make the stance fit with a character instead of designing a character or concept and then making the rules fit the concept. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I think it's just a set of expectations are different between the way it was back, back in the day and uh, the way it is now. Anyway... So let's start with our first guy here. We have the various services you can go in. Different options for things you can be in. We have our Navy, Marines, Army, Scouts, Merchants, and other. I think I'm going to try with Scouts first. I think that would be a really good career for somebody that's going to be in a solo RPG. We are going to, as I say, going to do the whole thing way you'd normally do it with survival roles and everything. So does he even get into the scouts? First thing we have to see, can we enlist into the scouts? Uh, this guy, I'm starting with, if he has an intelligence of six or more, he has a plus one. This one has an intelligence of eight. And if he has a strength of eight or more, he gets a plus two. He does not. So I get a plus one to this roll. Does this character get into the scouts? And with an eight plus one is nine, he does. He is a scout. So let's make a note of that. He is in the scouts. Now... Does he survive? <laughs> That's going to be the question. Our survival roll, if we have an endurance of 9 or more, we get a plus 2. He has an endurance of 11, so he's going to get a plus 2 to his roll. Does he survive his first term in the scouts? A 7? Ooh, yes, just. All right. So I'm going to say one of the things I like about the way you put together a traveler character is you almost do a little bit of world building as you're creating the character. Uh, so he rolled exactly a seven. He does have plus two because of his endurance. So a total of nine. So I'm just saying he did go out on a early scouting expedition with a few others. Uh, it was a very violent planet. It was actually, I'm gonna say volcanic. So it was really rough and it was only his endurance, his, his extra health that really helped him get through the poisonous gas and the heat and the just the suffocation and the ash and things like that. So he was able to get through and he was able to persevere and survive his first term of service. So he is now 22 years old. He has been through one term of service and he now gets two roles on the acquired skills table. So over here we can pick two skills as a scout from the acquired skills table. He can't get the advanced education because he only has a, an education of four. So we can pick from any of these. I think the first one we're going to do, he's got some really low stats. So I think the first one we're going to do is the Scout's uh, Personal Development Table. So let's roll Personal Development. So Personal Development of 6. And then is Gun Combat. Alright, so he gets Gun Combat. So I, you know, I'm going to change that. Now he's got Gun Combat. I'm going to say instead of being a volcanic planet, it was a planet that had a lot of... Um, uh, very dangerous life forms that had a lot of dangerous aliens and predators and even the plant life was uh, predatory on a lot of them. So he actually got very good at shooting a gun, learned how to shoot a gun and got better at shooting a gun because he had all these predatory animals that were constantly trying to attack them. So that is actually uh, what he learned from being for the scouts. And since he's a scout, he gets two every term. So let's go ahead and roll his next one. This one is going to be... I'm going to go on the surface... Skills. Yeah, service skills table. Let's see, what does he get here? That is going to be a five, and that is electronics. So while he goes on this scouting expedition, I'm going to say he went with a few others because he's brand new to the service. So he went with maybe two, three other scouts, and he learned how to do a little bit of electronic work through um, the ship systems, various things like that. Let's see, what's electronics say specifically as a skill? Let me find that description. Uh, use, operation, repair of electronic devices, handy in this field, equivalent of green thumb, skill of repair of energy weapons. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So while he was on the planet, he had, was in charge of maintaining and keeping up some of the electronic devices, some of the uh, testing, measuring devices they were using on this very violent planet. So he did get to do that. So he has Electronics 1. And since he is in the Scouts, he does automatically get Pilot 1. Alright, so he has Pilot 1 as well. All right, that's his first term of service is completed. Can he re-enlist? Has to roll a three or more. Let's see. Does he re-enlist? Yes, he does. He did a great job, and they are always needing new scouts, so he easily re-enlists for a second term. 
I'm going to make a note of how many terms he has here. So this is term number two. All right, continuing on. Does he survive? Let's see. Let's see. Seven or more with a plus two. That is six. And uh, only with his plus two does he actually make it through his second term in the Scouts. Uh, he, he, uh, oh, by the way, I haven't named any of these characters. I'm not going to until they survive. <laughs> so that's, that's why I'm calling him he. And I'm probably going to play a male character because I have familiarity with that. Uh, yes, yeah, so because of his uh, great job he did on the first expedition he went on that was very tough, very dangerous, and he was able to come through, uh, they sent him out on another very dangerous mission. I'll say this one's the volcanic one. And again, there's poison gas and ash and heat, and he was able to make it through, but only because he is so hardy and tough. That's why they sent him on this one. So he does survive, and he gets two more skills since he is a scout. We're going to go to the personal development table again. And that's going to be a 2, so that will bump up his dexterity, which is okay. His dexterity is going to go up to 5. Still not great, but it does go up to 5. And let's see, after that, let's do, um, let's do another service skill. And that's going to be another 5. All right, so he has really been working on the electronics. He has become an electronic expert. So that is one of the things that he needs. To, when he's on the planet, he is in charge of electronic devices, both uh, on the ships and the things that they set up, like, say, monitoring devices and, and stuff like that. All right. So that is second term. That was his second term. Um, he is now 26 years old. Is he going to continue? I, I think he is, honestly. This is going to be his third term. All right. So can he enlist for a third term? A three or more. Yes, he easily relists. They're more than happy to uh, see this individual come back into the scout service. So he does relist for a third term. Does he survive his third term? Let's find out. So far, he's been in some really hazardous uh, posts, really hazardous deployments. So let's see what happens in this one. Um, uh, ooh, five plus two is going to be seven. So he, again, they send him out to another, let's say this one is a, um, I'm going to say this one's like a water planet, like mostly water planet. And again, very, very harsh conditions. Almost seems like raging storms over the planet most of the time and violent waves, very little land. Um, again, maybe large sea predators like big krakens and megalodons and things like that. He almost succumbs. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that he, of the group he went with, he's one of the few that actually does return. Um, many of their fellow scouts were lost. So, yes, yeah, so that is a third term. And he does survive, and he is now 30 years old. Let's see. What is going to be? He gets two more skills. We're going to do personal development again because he's got some really low stats. So, let's see. That's a four for personal development. And that's going to increase his intelligence, which actually is one of his better, but it does go up. So his intelligence is now 9. And then we're going to go back to, I'm going to go to the advanced education table for his second skill. And that is a 5, which is gunnery. All right, so while he was on this planet, he became proficient and gained experience in using the uh, ship's weapons because they were on a uh, floating floating scout station, a floating scout flotilla. Or uh, or maybe he was there was a base, and he was one of the people that went out on reconnaissance missions or scouting missions or exploration missions, and he learned how to use the gun to fend off. They were attacked uh, by a kraken, and he was able to grab the guns and learn how to use it and help defend the ship as they were going out doing their thing. So he was... That's, that's kind of what he was doing specifically on that mission. One of the reasons why he only... Okay, here's what happened. He only survived because he leapt into the gun emplacement, and as the Kraken was destroying most of the ship, he was able to fire on it, destroy it, and chase it off. Yeah, there we go. Uh, see, this is the what I like about Travelers. If you can create these stories about your character as you're rolling randomly on the table. So, to me, this is a strength, not a weakness. Anyway, uh, that was his third term. Is he going to go for a fourth term? Um, um, that will be the first time he'll have to roll on the aging table, because after you get so uh, so advanced in age, 
you have to roll to see if you're going to maintain your uh, physical stats. You know what? Yeah, I think he's going to go for a fourth term. Can he enlist in a fourth term? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easily, because of the way he distinguished himself fighting off the creatures on this water planet, he is almost... They, they actually beg him <laughs> to to join in. As a matter of fact, a 12, I think, is automatically... They, they don't give him a choice. They say, no, no, no. You have to go on. You're actually extremely valuable to the service. So, yeah, you're going to go on, and that is going to be a fourth term. Fourth term... And that is meaning he's going to be 34 years old. All right, 34. Does he survive his fourth term? All right, let's see. The fourth term. Uh, yes, again, they take him to an extremely violent area, a fairly dangerous area. I'm going to say this time he was scouting... Um, Scouting planets. He actually wasn't planet side, but he was out in space going around. And I'm going to say this is the first time he was sent out by himself. So he was sent out as a lone scout in a ship, let's say scouting out and making a survey of planets that are not known, or finding new planets, or making new routes, or trying to find better routes, because in, in Traveler they have X boats that go from place to place to take information, almost like the old Pony Express. So I'm going to say that's what he did on his fourth term. He was kind of sent on his own and kind of rewarded for not dying on the other ones. Okay, so that's what he's going to do. All right, so that's two more skills for that. Let's see. The first one is going to be... I'm going to go for the personal development again for the first roll. That's a one, which is great because that strength, his strength is very low, and potentially he could lose some strength this term, and he's also going to go for, I'm going to go advanced education again. What does he get for that? Let's see. That's going to be a four, an advanced education four. Jack of all trades. So yes, while he was out by himself in a ship, he had to learn how to do a little bit of everything. So he's really shown a proficiency in being able to pick up things very quickly. All right. I have to be honest, rolling this character with his low stats not my favorite guy, but he's slowly becoming <laughs> really interesting. All right. So, Jack of Trades, one. That is his fourth term. And now he has to roll to see if he loses any of his physical characteristics or if they decrease because of his age. 34 is quite young and virile, I think. Why 34? Anyway, uh, let's go ahead. Let's see. Does he lose any strength? Has to roll an eight or more. Let's see. Um, yes, he maintains his strength, so he doesn't lose any strength. How about his dexterity? A seven or more? All right. Oh, no. Ooh, he rolled a six, so he does lose a point of dexterity. His dexterity does go down. Oh, dear. All right. So from being in a spaceship from the last four years and not getting around, I'm going to say maybe that, and being older, uh, maybe that... This is why he's not quite as nimble as he was, although it's aging, really not experience. Anyway, and let's see for his endurance. That's an eight or more. Uh, oh, no. No, he loses he loses some of his endurance as well. So his famed endurance does go down to ten, which is also known as A, because this is a hexadecimal notation. All right, so that's that turn. Is he going to go for a fifth turn? Ah. <sighs> Yes, I think he is. I, I I just feel like I should. Can he re-enlist? Let's see. Yes, he can easily. They were more than happy to have him re-enlist. And so now this is going to be his fifth term. Term number five. And he will end this at 38. 38. All right. So does he survive? <laughs> Somebody who's been through a lot of difficult missions in the past. Let's see if he makes it. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Easily. I'm going to say, finally, he is getting older. He's proven himself. He has nothing to he has nothing to prove to anybody because of his earlier posts and his other earlier deployments. So, yeah, he makes it. He actually gets a much easier job this time. He goes out, and he is uh, doing some survey on a much tamer planet. Let's say it's very pastoral with large... Grazing herds, there are predators, but nothing extremely dangerous like his earlier posts. So he does make it through. Whew! 
All right, uh, let's go ahead. Let's try to do personal development. He does feel the time creeping up on him, and age is taking its toll, so let's see what he can do there. A six, that is going to be a gun combat. Okay, so while he was out, let's say he did become better at gun because he was on this pastoral planet, and he was able to learn to shoot and hunt and take care of himself a little bit. So his gun combat's going to go up to two, which is not bad. And then we're going to go back to uh, advanced education table. Let's see, what do we have here? And a one. And a one is vehicle. So he was out. Let me make sure what vehicle means. What does vehicle actually mean? Does it mean driving anything, or is it something specific? All right. I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say he was wheeled vehicle. I'm going to say he, he does that. And in fact, now that I look at this, it says I'm supposed to immediately pick one of those. So I might need to go back and check, make sure this oh, those are all generic. Uh, I'm going to say wheeled vehicle because he was somewhere that had uh, wide open planes. And he was uh, riding like an ATV or some like bigger type thing getting around. He had a little base, a little base camp. Where he stayed and he was driving around trying to get places. Let me double check and make sure I don't have to pick. Actually, for gun combat, I think I might. Okay, yes, gun combat. I have to pick which gun he is he is good at. So I will pick that here in just a minute. And gunnery is gunnery mounted on board starships and spacecraft. Right. I'm going to still say it was a watercraft, specifically while he was doing his terms. Jack of all trades is everything. Let me double check for pilot. Pilot. Starships and large interplanetary ships. Okay, so he learns how to, just by being in the service of the scouts, you learn how to pilot spaceships. And finally, electronics. But I looked at that. I don't think it is... Yeah, I don't think it's any specific. See, okay, I'm going to say vehicle is wheeled vehicle. I do need to pick a specific gun that he is proficient in. Uh, I'm going to say the gun that he is proficient in is rifle. We're going to say gun combat rifle. Um, I think rifle might work for him being um, learning it because he was on a violent planet with a lot of predators. So, yeah, probably rifle would be good. And then if he was going to be hunting, rifle probably be the best one. All right. He has served five terms. He is 38 years old. And it is time to see if age is catching up with him even more. So let's roll his aging. So, eight or better for the strength. Yes, he's able to keep up his strength. How about the dexterity? Seven or more. Yes, he keeps up his dexterity. How about his endurance? His endurance is quite good, so he can afford to lose some if he does. And he does. So, his endurance does drop while he's on the planet, on his next mission. I'm going to say after five terms, he has decided it's time to retire. And he does. Now, he does get retirement pay. Of 4,000 credits. That's annually. <laughs> so, uh, but he did serve five terms. Now he gets to muster out. And he gets a roll on the mustering out table. So now he is going to retire, and so we're going to roll on the mustering out table to see what does he get from his many, many years of service to the scouts. So let's see. We have uh, benefits and we have cash. I'm going to roll on the benefits just, just to see. So a D6, four rolls, one, no, I'm sorry, five rolls, one for each of his terms of service, and a six, and that is a scout ship, which is honestly kind of what I was hoping for. I think this may be my character. <laughs> I have all these other stats. They may turn out to be NPCs or people that show up in the rest of the adventure, but this may be, may be the one. Uh, so he does get, let me write a note here. So mustering out, he gets a scout ship. Now, scout ships are given with the assumption that you're going to continue to use it to explore strange new worlds. Uh, and they can also call you back into service whenever they need to. So that's a great thread. That's a great uh, hook to bring in adventures. We'll see what happens with that. All right, so that's one roll. Roll number two, mustering out. Four is going to be blade. If I remember correctly, I can either get a blade, as in I get a sword or a knife, or... I can use it as a skill, I believe. Let me double check. And according to page 29, the benefits table indicates the results blade or gun. In such cases, a character may choose any weapon in the category. If, while mustering out, the same benefit is received again, 
the character has the option of taking another example of the same weapon, selecting a different weapon, or taking the benefit as a plus one in skill in the weapon previously received. So, it sounds like to me he gets a blade, first of all. He doesn't have a great skill in that, but he does get a blade. So which blade is he going to take? I, I feel like since he is a scout um, and he had a rifle, I'm going to say bayonet. Let's say he, he used a bayonet because it can be used as a dagger or stuck on the end of his rifle. I'm going to say he did get a, a bayonet to add to his rifle. And technically, he doesn't have a rifle right now. <laughs> that look, by the way, you're done in scouts? No, no, no. The rifle stays. You can keep the bayonet. Rifle stays with us. So, we'll see that. Maybe he, with some of the money, with his 4,000 annual pension, he can buy a rifle and carry that around with him. All right, so that's two rolls. Now, roll number three on mustering out. Let's see what we get here. A uh, two. A uh, two. What is two? Two is plus two intelligence. All right. That's going to bump him up to 11 or B. Using the hexadecimal. Hexadecimal. Okay. That's three rolls. Let's try roll number four. Again, going for the benefits. Or do we want to go for the cash? It's decent cash. Um, let's do one more on the benefits and then I'll do one on cash. So let's see. Benefits. Another two. That is going to be another plus two to his intelligence. So, wow, that's going to bump him up to, it's 11 right now. That's going to bump him up to 13 intelligence. So, not bad. Not bad. Very intelligent, but weak and clumsy individual. And finally, we're going to go for cash. His last roll is going to be cash. So, how much does our scout get? One. So, he does get 20 grand. 20,000 credits, with which to buy a rifle or anything else he might need. So, that's pretty much how you generate a Traveler character. Um, to be honest, as I said, I rolled multiple stats because I wasn't sure how well I would do. And using the survival roll, I thought, he may die. Uh, this character may die. Now that he has gone through his career and mustered out, I will give this individual a name. And I'm going to use, even though it's not a traveler book. I am going to use Xanathar's Guide for this because they do have some good name tables in there, especially for humans. All right, yes, now I know this is slight blasphemy because I'm making a traveler character and I'm using something other than 2d6. Uh, I'm going to roll randomly on the name for English males. Come up with a name for this guy. So what have we got here? Oh, 7. Zero 07 is going to be Anselm. A-N-S-E-L-M. Anselm. All right, let me write that down because that is his name, Anselm. All right, Anselm the Scout. Anselm the very clumsy, weak Scout. Uh, and that's pretty much how you put together a Traveler character. I think I'm going to go with this one, and we will see what happens. So I hope you've enjoyed this. hope this was a little bit of an insight about how to go about creating a Traveler character. And next time, I will begin the adventures of Anselm the Scout in the Traveler Universe. Thanks for watching.